Hello, this is the lecture on developing research instruments. Uh, this first video is going to cover surveys and interviews. So before we talk about the different research instruments, we'll talk about the different types of studies. So this is a review from when we discussed the method section of your paper. Your study will be one of three. Uh, you may have a quantitative study, which means that your data is going to be in the form of numbers, percentages, that sort of thing. Qualitative study means that your data will be in the form of words or descriptions. And a mixed method study includes both quantitative and qualitative data. So this, uh, this can happen if you, include, if you have more than one research instrument. Okay, so surveys. Surveys for the most part are going to be used in quantitative studies because you'll be counting up the number of times a certain response is chosen. If you are planning to do a survey, you need to, um, you need to distribute at least 50 surveys. Okay, so first type of study, or survey, I'm sorry, is a Likert scale survey. A Likert scale survey is a survey in which you ask participants to rate the level of agreement with a statement. So typically you're going to give them um, a scale that ranges from one to six, one being they strongly disagree with a given statement, six being that they strongly agree, um, or it can be on any even scale. So if you wanted to give them four options, so strongly disagree, disagree, agree, strongly disagree. The important thing is that you only give them an even number of choices because an odd number results in that neutral choice where participants are not rating a level of agreement or disagreement and neutral doesn't really tell you anything. So you always want to force your participants to, to have to either agree or disagree in some form. So to give you an example of what this looks like, okay, this is a Likert scale survey. So you'll notice uh, the directions, read each statement and circle the appropriate number to indicate your level of agreement or disagreement with the statement. Please note the following scale when recording your responses. So you can see one is strongly disagree and then progresses up to strongly agree. So again, you'll notice that these are, um, the survey is in the form of statements. So this is a way for you to determine people's attitudes or beliefs or even experiences, um, you know, how often maybe they, they do something. Uh, this is a good type of, of survey to use if you're trying to get that kind of information. Um, another type of survey oh, is called the semantic differential scale. This is where you are asking participants to make judgments on people, events, activities, whatever. Um, you'll also provide a range of judgments. This is, again, you want to give them an even number of choices. So here's an example. Okay, so this is an example semantic differential scale. So the directions, please indicate your feelings about the workshop presenters and materials by placing a check on the appropriate line. So this could be a survey you would take after you attend a workshop for, for your job. Um, so participants are asked to judge the workshop presenters on the scale of knowledgeable to not knowledgeable unresponsive to responsive, helpful to not helpful, so on and so forth, and then also the workshop materials. Notice again, like I mentioned before, you give them an even number of choices, so there's no middle choice that would be that kind of neutral response. You don't want to provide a cop out for this. Um, so this is, again, another good type of survey to get people's perceptions or, or judgments on a certain thing. Um, Okay, another type of survey would be just multiple choice. So this is probably what you're most familiar with because you've taken multiple choice surveys and even tests before. So, um, you know, if you're asking participants to check a box, if you're asking them to circle one response out of many, or if you're giving them the option to select more than one response, so basically all that apply, um, you know, and. Basically, it gives you a lot of different options to get the kind of information that you want. Um, and you can combine item types. If you have a multiple choice survey, you don't have to just have all of the same type of items. You can, you can do a variety. Um, 
So that's basically it about surveys. So moving on. Interviews. Okay. So interviews are going to be part of a qualitative study because your, all of your data is going to be in the form of words or descriptions. Um, and in terms of how many interviews you should conduct, at least one. Obviously, the more interviews you can do, the more data you'll have, and the better off you'll be. But if all you can do is one, that's okay. Uh, one thing to consider is that you can do a focus group interview rather than just an individual interview. And that allows you to conduct more than one interview at the same time um, and therefore collect more data without having to schedule multiple interviews. Also, just you know, for simplicity's sake, if you're unable to schedule an interview in person but can do it over the phone, uh, that, that's allowable as well. Okay, so there's three different types of interviews. The first is called a structured interview, and this means that uh, you've, you've written your interview questions, you do not deviate from those questions. So you ask a question, participant answers, you ask the next question. So there's not any conversation that really takes place with a structured interview. A semi-structured interview um, is a little less rigid than a structured, where you'll, uh, you'll, um, you'll prepare interview questions, but you'll also use follow-up questions or probes. Um, so it becomes a little bit more conversational, where depending on how your participant answers a question, you may ask them to provide more information about a certain, a certain part of their answer. Or you may have pre-planned follow-up questions, um, depending on you know, what you kind of anticipate your participants may say. A non-structured interview actually doesn't include any questions. Instead, you have guided, or your interview is guided by topics. So, uh, you know, for example, if you are, um, if 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 you are researching something related to education, you may ask your participant just to tell you about their experience in middle school, and you just kind of see where the discussion goes, and then you'll have probes um, to you know, glean more information from their responses depending on what they have to say. So whatever type of interview you choose to do is fine. It just really depends on how much control you want to have over the direction that the conversation may go. Now, regardless of what type of an interview you choose, you want to make sure you have an interview protocol. So this is something that you've pre-prepared that's going to list the questions or the topics that you've decided on. And you'll also have a script that explains the purpose, the, um, the date, a place for you to record the date, the time, and the demographics of your participant. So, you know, you'll want to include um, any, any pertinent demographic information. Um, and this, obviously, you want to have pre-written as well. The script is really important in explaining to your participants what the purpose is of your study and what their role is, and then, um, Obviously, the record keeping here for the date and time and demographics is important for your purposes. Um, I also suggest that you record your interview. If you just take handwritten notes, you're going to miss stuff, and then you're not going to be able to go back and look at everything from your interview. Um, you're going to forget things over time. So at the very least, I would recommend having a voice recording of your interview. A lot of phones have recording devices on them. Um, if you're able to videotape, that would actually be the best case scenario because body language and you know, visible emotional reactions to your questions can also become a part of your data. Um, and again, a lot of phones have video cameras on them now. If you don't have this type of technology, a lot of it is available through the library, so you can just let me know and I can get you a video camera or a recorder of some sort. But obviously, you need your participants' permission to record the interview. If they decline that, then there's not really much you can do about it at that point. But again, I would highly recommend recording it because then you can go back and reference your interview as many times as you need to and you won't have to worry about forgetting anything or missing anything. All right, so this concludes our, oh, nope, just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna show you an example interview now. All right, so this is an example 
interview. Um, it includes part of the protocol, just the questions and the follow-up questions. So this would be an example of a semi-structured interview. You'll notice that there are questions, but there's also the follow-ups and some probes. Um, a script would look like this. Um, where you would state your name, the kind of purpose of your project. Um, this, this one is written for, for a survey, but you could very easily reward this um, for, for an interview. So this would be something that you'd want to have written out so you know exactly what you want to say before you administer your, your survey or your interview. So um, you know, it goes without saying that you want to have a script for your surveys as well before you hand them out or if this is part of your directions, if you're going to post your survey online, whatever it may be, you want people to kind of understand uh, why you're doing what you're doing and what their, what their role is. Okay, so this concludes our discussion of surveys and interviews. Uh, the next video will cover observational checklists and then any other things for you to consider as you prepare your research instruments.